Popper Players Podcast. I'm Frusile. Thank you so much for joining me. If this is your first time joining me, the philosophy of this podcast is to speak to the players who are shaping the metagame so that their voices can be heard. This week's voice, Hampus won, fresh off an undefeated run in the Sunday Challenge, taking it down with Tron. He's here to talk about his tournaments, to talk about the deck, to go over its matchups in the current metagame, and to talk about Popper in general. To make an allusion to a very famous episode of television, the Tron player says, no combat for you. yourself and about how you started playing Magic the Gathering. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Hampus, I'm from Sweden, um, I'm 25 years old and right now I'm a student, I'm studying to get a Master in Science and Education. It's kind of like a dual dual exam, so I'm going to be a teacher and I'm also going to be what we call civil engineer, like a Master in Science, I can work as a project leader or a programmer or similar things. When I'm not studying, uh, or sleeping, or eating, I try to play as much games as possible. Um, right now, I play mostly Popper, play a little bit of Pokemon, a little bit of Hearthstone. Uh, I started playing card games when some friends showed me Yu-Gi-Oh! in our local game store, back when I was 12 or 13 or so. So I played Yu-Gi-Oh! For, for a bit, and then I found the Pokemon tournaments at the, the same store, uh, which ended up to me being the uh, best Pokemon player in Sweden for a while. Uh, I won some national championships, so I've been participating in the world championships a few times, like six or seven or so. Uh, so Pokemon has been my biggest game. I also played the uh, Epic Card Game the past few years. It's not that big of a game, but I hope it's gonna catch on. Fun fact from the Epic Card Game, the first world championships, uh, there were a lot of magic pros invited. So in my first cube draft, I had Paul Rietzel, Michael Majors, and I think it was Sam Black pass cards to me. It was pretty cool. I also played a little, a little Magic, of course. I started playing competitive Magic when uh, Return to Ravnica rotated it out. When there was like Theros Block, M15, and Cons. Yeah. So I played a lot of Green Devotion. Uh, I really liked the Green White Devotion mid Mass Rift as a scene, going wide, this kind of strategy. My best results from back then was a top 16 at a original PTQ. So not that big of a results in, in Magic. I've also played some Despoiled, um, some deck building games like Dominion. Tried a lot of online games, of course, like Hearthstone, Eternal, Artifact. Uh, played some, a lot of, lot of League of Legends as well. It's quite the interesting history of card games. It really makes me wonder why you stuck with Popper of all the options you have. So, why did I start playing Popper? To be honest, I don't really remember why I started playing Popper. I have been playing Magic Online on and off. As I said, I, I played a lot of Standard back in 2015, so I had a lot of cards and tickets and whatever online so i think i just saw popper probably like a popper daily or something popper league and just tried out some some decks looking back at my like published results i know i played drake back in 2016 uh drake with tron and but it was banned so i couldn't play that anymore but like i really really started to play popper after someone i don't remember the person's name he posted a fogtron primer at uh, at reddit so he had like an insane winning record i think it was like 85 percent match match win or something i took that for a spin i really liked how it how it played out that was the the version without stonehorn so I did some 5-0, and oh. I also played my first challenge in uh, in May or April, April 2018, and I just kept playing. Um, I like winning, and I've been winning a lot. With Tron in Popper and with Stonehorn, I picked up Hell's House Stonehorn list a couple of weeks after playing this Fogtron list, and I haven't really been back since then. I really, really like the either the controlling decks or comboing decks, and I think Popper is the perfect place for that. There's a lot of like, broken stuff going on, lots of cards being banned in other other formats being legal here, and I think Tron is a 
combination of combo and control, which is perf a perfect fit for me. So that's kind of what I started. And like, I think Helso said the same thing is in his podcast that he really enjoys winning. And <laughs> I think that's why I've been sticking around for so much in Popper as well, because I really enjoy winning. Like I play, I play to win. Uh, I do play some formats, of course, because it's fun. Like cube is awesome. But in the end, I'm a competitive player and I enjoy winning. And I've been doing that in Popper. If I would have have this same win percentages in another format, I would probably play that. But Popper has uh, has been has been nice to me. So you've been on Tron for a while, pretty much your entire history as a Popper player. Can you walk me through the lead up to this event? So I ended up winning the challenge this week. It was actually my first challenge win. I've had some playoffs, top fours, and some top eights and challenges, of course. The list is completely Hell's House. Um, he gave me the list the week before or so. And I took it to five leagues, ended up winning 21 of my 25 games, with two of the losses being to the mirror, which is a crazy record. I really like the list, I think it's really consistent. I, I ended up doing seven anti-combat cards in main deck, and he went with eight. Uh, I think seven and three horrors was better for challenge, and maybe the other way around for, for leagues. My challenge was I played versus um, Black and White Pestilence twice. It's an insane matchup. They can pretty much only win by like having Pestilence kill all your, all your guys, then exile them with Paducah Bog uh, a few times. But if you play carefully, there are very few ways for them to win. I did end up beating Stompy twice as well in the in the Swiss. I think Lone Missionary is a really, really good card for that matchup uh, because on the draw, if you play a lone missionary, it's kind of hard for them to beat you turn 4, which is one of the problems in that matchup. If you get past turn 4, it's quite easy to, to stop, start looping your, your fogs and stone horns. I did beat uh, Burb on the Tron Mirror. Uh, Tron Mirror is the actual worst matchup in, in uh, Magic, so I don't think any one of us enjoys playing it. Uh, me and Helso actually ended up splitting the semifinals because none of us felt like playing the, the Mirror. So we ended up splitting. I kept on playing the finals and uh, ended up beating beating Luffy on Affinity, which I also beat in the Swiss. The last two games was the seventh round, which was Burn, and also the quarterfinals was Burn again. Burn is actually a pretty good matchup for this list because we bring in nine cards, bring in four blasts, three dispels, and two missionaries, uh, which is a lot. So if you win game one, you are very heavily favored to win. And I think Tabadonk didn't play. Alchemist either, which just improves the matchups for us. You know, that's certainly surprising because historically, Burn beats Tron, right? Most people think that's one of the matchups that Tron is afraid of. These days, what matchups are you afraid of? I'm not really afraid of any matchups. Uh, I guess like some kind of black land destruction might be might be ugly to play against, but that's not that a bad matchup either. But uh, game one versus Burn is a bit rough. Uh, they can easily kill you turn 4, and if they are on the play with an alchemist, you're not going to win the game most of the time. But because the sideboard is so good versus burn, it improves the matchups uh, so much. I think like er anything that they can kill turn 4 is quite scary, but as long as you make it out of that turn 4 alive, you're pretty much favored to, to win all the matchups. So that, that's really the only thing that, that concerns you is, one, losing the dice roll and then playing against something that's so aggressive that it can finish you in a very, very quick manner before Stonehorn comes down to begin locking out the opponent, right? Yeah, so like Stompy, Stompy Boggles, uh, Affinity can, can kill you turn 4, Elves can kill you turn 4. If they land the, the tap guy, add, add uh, damage, turn, like turn 3. I saw some people talking on Reddit as well that Boris Bully, Bully had a, a good matchup versus Tron, and I don't really know where they got that from, because Boris Bully is just a slower version of like Stompy or whatever. I guess it's better to go wide versus some decks, but like versus Tron, you, you need to kill me fast. Yeah, if Boris Bully had a good Tron matchup, then I would have won the challenge already, as opposed to be the perpetual third place finisher when I do do well. Because there's, there's, like no, there's like no way you kill on turn 4 with Bully, right? Because you need to play the rally, and you don't really have that big of a field. I guess if you go like one drop seeker plus one drop plus seeker. Yeah, if you go if you go throb an inspector into r raise the alarm is the card I'm thinking of into what another raise the alarm into a turn four rally. That's quite a lot of damage, but seems rare. 
Seems difficult to do. And most decks can't kill me turn 4 if I have any kind of interaction, except for burn. So like, if I would have one moment space, they can't kill me turn 4. If I had like, one oracle, one prohibit, one condescend, they can't kill me turn 4. So walk me, th walk me through the evolution of this deck after the Astrolabe ban, because in my last episode of the Popper Players podcast, I was talking with Condescent. He won the challenge. I took third that day, and you quietly took fourth with this basically the same deck with the Stonehorn Tron. So talk to me about the ban, right? Astrolabe goes away. You can't play snow-covered islands anymore for the majority of your mana base. Talk to me about how that changes the deck structurally. Yeah, so I started off after the ban to like look back at results before Astrolabe, which was, I think it was, I think Modern Horizons was released mid-June. This was like six months ago. Uh, so back then we played a lot of tap lands. I think me and Helsa was down to two of the game lands and six of the filter lands. So I started off trying that and also playing, I tried Guild Globes instead of Astrolabes. I also tried, I guess Golden Egg is, is the same. I know Burb tried, tried Signets, but I've never really been a fan of Signets uh, because they don't really draw, draw cards. So they're good in some draws and they're bad in some draws. And then Adepto, he played the challenge last week before before my win. And he was on the five, five tap lands, three caves. And I think that was probably what inspired Helsa to create, create the list. Because I think tap lands are, are like more consistent, even though they're a bit slow. But you don't really want want more than four filter lands, I think. But yeah, and we play a lot of creatures, uh, more creatures than we did before Astrolabe, because we have some space now. Like we used to play six flickers for Astrolabes, but now we only play two flickers to ephemerates. We have some space for oracles, and they're quite good to slow down, get you to late game. And the Nova Horror is just amazing versus some matchups and, and also versus mirror i think three of that is is really good but most of the list has been has been the same for for i guess a year and a half and i'm also really happy about the four expedition maps i think i went up to four expeditions maps uh a bit before i sort of got got banned but i know some people has been down to like two or three and i think that's that's bad because you really want to the tron as soon as possible you mentioned Dimrova horror being good what matchups does it shine against, and what matchups are you signing it out against? So it's it's the best in in the mirror, and I guess versus versus things that have the the double lands, the bounce lands, it's really good, and it kind of secures like all the black matchups because black like black white pestilence is a really good matchup, and if you just land one zero horror bouncing like a double land or the uh, Guardian of Kill Pact, just such a huge card advantage, and it's also four four, so they have to deal with it uh, directly. But I usually, I usually board it out versus most aggressive decks. Might keep one versus Elves. Might keep one versus Stompy on the play at least. Because like versus Stompy, I bring in Moments Peace, Missionaries, uh, sometimes Ancient Grudge. So the Nova Horror is the first cards that are getting cut versus versus Aggro, uh, at least if they have combat. Combat damage so like versus Bernie bring out four stone horn, three piece, two two horrors for the nine cards. So versus all aggressive decks, I'm cutting I'm cutting horror, and that's also why Hellsau played two horrors, four pieces, uh, because you brought it out so, so in so many matchups. Speaking of Hellsau, we do know in the last week he shared with us that in addition with his top four split with you, he has six five zeros, two four ones, two three twos, and a two three finish which is quite the win rate what is your league win rate been since the challenge have you gotten some leagues in how are you doing in that yeah uh, so i had i played five leagues before the challenge with the list and i had a record of 20 21 four with three of the games being versus tron so not counting tron mirror i was 20 and two it really begs the question are you going to change anything with this list is or is it optimized i haven't changed anything yet i think it's really really good like you have you have basically everything you want in, in the deck so i'm not sure because it feels like you're covering so many things and ex except like if the metagame changed maybe we want some other things uh, i played the league yesterday went two and three because I played versus uh, Delver twice. So I lost against Blue Delver and also versus Is it Is it uh, Fairies? And maybe we want some kind of gut shots. Serrated Arrows was played a lot before 
before yesterday, so it's not something like that. But other than that, I think this is a pretty good list. I know we can play like Ultimate Crusher for the mirror as well, but we already have the three Dinrova horrors. So I don't think we want more for the mirror. See, I think that's interesting because that's not one of the things that there is widely a consensus on with Tron pilots. Some Tron pli pilots say that Crusher is terrible. Others say that Crusher is great in the mirror. It seems like you fall into the second category. In your opinion, why is Crusher so important in the mirror? So I think if, if you land the Crusher, it's really hard to, to deal with it because you have boarded out your Stonehorn. Unless you see a Crusher, then you might keep it in, like a one or two. But usually you board out all your Stonehorns and if you just land a crusher and you don't have the of a horror or a counter spell, it's just gonna win the game in two turns. Usually you can sacrifice one combat staff, or like uh, sack two things from the crusher ability. But after that, you're just gonna get uh, crushed by it. I appreciate that wordplay. And it's also easy to cast. You don't need any prisms or anything. You just need the Tron and then you can cast it. What advice would you have for players who are looking to pick up Tron who have never played it before? So, well, uh, if you're gonna play online, you need to play fast. And I think you should also like aim to, to get Tron as fast as possible. Don't be afraid to like play Mold Rifter uh, with Evoke, just letting it die. I think there's also, you need to play around stuff. So like versus, versus Burn, for example, you need to play around the Searing Blazes, game one at least. Maybe, because I, I don't know if they bring it in, bring it out after. Like game one, I usually evoke Mold Drifter, even though I could play for five because I wanted in my Discord Craft and Pulse and I don't want them to have a base target. And I think you should also play as safe as possible uh, until the point when you we can't play safe. Like versus Stompy, try to play around, uh, what's it called, the, the protecting thing. Vines of Vastwood. Yeah, exactly. So you try to play around that as much as possible and uh, Versus control, you want to try to have like a few threats in your hand before playing anything because they can counter maybe like one or two things every turn. But if you wait until you have Tron or like 12, 14 mana, you can just play like two or three drifters in a turn and they can't really handle that. And of course, experience with the deck is play more and more, is try to get experience. And don't forget that you can win with compulsive research, milling them out, and use the Cave of Temptation to, to attack for more with the Mulder Rifter. He also actually reminded me that before before the finals, like don't forget the caves, because because we haven't played the cave until Astrolabe was banned, so I haven't really used the, the cave active ability uh, ever before. I think it was, what set was it out in? It, it, it is from Modern Horizons, so we didn't really get to play with it before Astrolabe, because they were released at the same time. So I don't really have a play pattern like in my mind yet, and I'm hoping to get that soon. Speaking of Hellsaw, he is very adamant about his opinions on Tron being overpowered in this format. He feels as if he is forced to play this deck because it is so good. What is your take on that discussion? Where does Tron fit in in terms of power level? Is it simply too good or do we need people playing more turn one Delvers just to keep it in check and allow the metagame, you know, to be a little bit healthier? So I've been playing Tron now for, for 18 months and like there hasn't been a lot of points where I felt like Tron was bad. It was a challenge. The first challenge with blue black Delver being good, I got crushed. That was my like, I think I had like straight top 32s for like 15 challengers or so. And then the blue black Delver came and uh, just crushed Tron. Then we figured out how to play the matchup and it, it got better. Like Tron has been very good for a long time. And then they banned all the blue cards a while ago. And Tron just got even better. And then banned Astral Astrolabe and it seems like Tron got even better. I don't know. I think it would make sense to ban Tron lands. They're very powerful. I know Hellsaw wants, wants to ban so many cards. And I don't know if that's the way, but I think maybe banning the Tron Lance would be would be fine, or just banning banning Flicker because Flicker is a bit too powerful. Because you usually want the this displays effect, right? You just bounce two creatures, but there are so many times I just bounce two prisms to draw two cards, or bounce land to save them from from land destruction. So I think the deck is a bit too powerful right now, even though it it has a bad match versus Delver as the deck is right now. So Delver and the Mirror Match and losing the die roll against aggressive strategies, and that's sort of just the list of what you're afraid of. Yeah, and the, but there hasn't been any Delver. I, I don't think there's been any Delvers in the challenges these past few weeks. I mean, not, not many, at least. Tell me then, theoretically, let's say Tron gets emergency banned tomorrow. 
what deck would you play and why? I would probably pick up something like Raptor's decks. Uh, he plays a lot of either the Walls decks or uh, like Pestamite combo because I like capsizing people out of the game. So probably something like that. Um, I also really like blue control decks. I usually try them when someone gets a nice list posted. When I try them, don't really do that hot, so I usually drop them pretty soon. I also really like the black white pestilence from from Amoras. Uh, it has a terrible troll matchup, but it has pretty good matchups around after that. I know he, Amoras at 27, he got to play both me and Hells out the first two rounds in the challenge, so he got a bit unlucky there. But I tried his list the week before as well, and I really enjoyed how that played out. Yeah, I'm down with White Black Pestilence. I think Amoras' build is very controlling. I know that previous guest, Provost, found some success in this challenge with a mid range version, which I think I'm a little bit more on the mid-range side of things. I kind of like to attack with creatures. Maybe that's why I don't like Tron. I've never really been big on Tron, and it seems like that's pretty much all you've played. Earlier this year, you played Tron to a top four finish in the original playoff, qualifying you for the, the playoff championship. Tell me a little bit about what you're going to do to prepare for the format championship. Well, I'm not really sure. I, I'm going to take it very seriously, of course, because uh, it's one of my goals to to be in a pro tour sometime. Even though, of course, medical line championship is a bigger bigger prize, but it would be cool to be in, be in a pro tour as well. I'm just going to play as much as possible. Unfortunately, I have exams two days before and one day after, so I probably have to prepare for those as well. But I'm just going to play as much as possible. And if Tron doesn't go away, I don't really see me playing something that isn't Tron. But I kind of hope hope for for some bans before, because I think a lot of people will bring Tron if this is the case. Or maybe like Tron versus Delver. I don't really like how that sounds. I'm going to try to play as much as possible. Maybe get a small group of people talk to talk to Hellsha. But I'm really excited about it. It was pretty fun to qualify. And also to top 40, the second playoff as well that's true i had forgotten about that completely i remember reaching out to you immediately afterwards and being like i see you you top forward both these things i see you yeah that was a cool experience and i really enjoyed like wizards having this uh, kind of tournament series online i think that's really cool to to make the formats bigger both for proper and vintage and, and legacy i think modern is fine as it is but like Legacy Vintage is, is really cool. I think I think Pioneer is looking really cool as well. Even though it, it's a bit strange to like release a new completely new format when they already announced Historic on, on Arena. But I think it's a pretty cool looking format and I'm looking forward to, to try to play that the more. I did buy the, the Teamer Land stake. It was I think it was called Splendid Reclamation. The things that gets back all the lands from the graveyards. So you can get like... 25 feel of the dead triggers at the same time this is like a faster escape shift in a way yeah i'm i'm, a, I'm excited for that and you haven't tried pioneer yet right i have not played pioneer yet not i'm probably just gonna wait until after the format championship my goal for the format championship will be to top eight i think that a top eight would be good for my platform i don't see myself winning i'll be honest i see one of the best popper players in the world winning and i feel like i'm on that second tier i feel like i'm one of the better popper players out there but i'm not one of the best popper players out there so frankly i think top eight would be like a win for me you know what i mean like so that's just me i really hope someone wins that like does something special because i feel like i can like I can take a deck uh, and just play it very good but i'm not really a step ahead so like for except for example for the the October Mox thing. I played uh, Field of the Dead, but that was like one week after Field of the Dead got big. So I was like one week behind and I just lost every mirror match because they were more prepared. And I think if someone is prepared like one step ahead of the competition for the former championships, they're gonna have a really good time. If they like find a way to, to get the Tron mirror up to like 70, 30 uh, or something, you have, will have a very good time in the tournament, I think. Yeah, I'm not gonna be surprised when either Raptor or Hellsaw or Against takes it down. Those, I think... And this, perhaps this segment is too controversial now to see the light of day. But none of those three would surprise me. Against, of course, being the three-time back-to-back-to-back Brazilian national champion. So that guy probably knows his way around Popper. Raptor, obviously, is the deck builder 
of the format and no slouch when it comes to technical play. And Hellsaw is, well, he is Tron. So if Tron's legal, I can't imagine him having a bad time with it. Yeah, I agree. And I think the the ban announcement, there's like one in 10 days and there's probably one right before the championship, right? I think it's every six weeks. So that should be so 18th. Yeah, so it's... I think it's one or two weeks before before the championship. Yeah, we'll see what happens. They're probably thinking of doing something right now, I hope. Or maybe they just want to see like what happens after Astral was banned in, in more tournaments than, than two or three ch- challenges. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe bring back something. Maybe they bring, bring back Gush or, or um, something else. Same, dude. Days and Probe, they're not, com- they're not coming back. Get out of here. Get out of here. His cards are way too good. I mean, days, not so much, but considering Mystic Sanctuary is a thing, maybe it is now. Maybe it is a problem. So you, you talked a little bit about Caves of Temptation being the new plaything with Tron. What other cards that were recently printed have caught your eye? I know Mystic Sanctuary, for example, is quite popular right now. Yeah, so uh, Cave of Temp- Temptation, of course, is a is a better card than the Unknown Shores or the other Filtered Lands. I also tried to to play Mystic Sanctuary in, in Tron, just like a few games after after the ban. Never really get a hang of it. There hasn't really been a lot of other cards that I've been interested in. Ephemerate, of course, is, is very good and played a lot. I don't I don't brew a lot, so I haven't really seen any cards I'm very interested in in playing. So no, not really any. Do you have any cards? I think Mystic Sanctuary is going to make an impact. I think the card is quite powerful. It'll be interesting to see just how well adopted Witch's Cottage is. It'll be interesting to see if Golden Egg is going to replace Alchemist's Vial in the Boros Monarch lists. It probably should. I think Golden Egg is just better than than the Vial. But again, I only have the Tron perspective, and Vial doesn't do anything versus Tron. Uh, so it might be better in some other matchups. I think it probably depends on one's local metagame, right? If we're going to talk, we're talking about like local stores. Do you have players with a Togs trying to attack you? Well, Golden Egg does nothing. Three three points of life will not matter, but being able to stop a Tog for a turn or two, maybe find that Prismatic Strands, get that soft lock with the Monarch going, that way you can find a journey to nowhere. That would be relevant in terms of a consideration. Whereas if locally you've got a lot of burn players, well, that alchemist vial is incredibly poor. So, and the paper metagame, there's not a clear winner in my assessment. It'll be interesting to see what happens online to see who the clear winner is between those two slots. I think Ginger Brew may see some play in Stompy and possibly Mono White Heroic. The evasion is fairly unique. But other than that, I'm quite excited to, to play some, some cards in Pioneer. I played uh, some Jessica Ascendancy back when it was legal in Standard, and I'm excited to play that again. And also Wilderness Reclamation is quite cool. And I never, I was never around playing with the Swings Revelations blue white control decks. Like I played Standard just ex- exactly when I rotate it out. So that's something I'm, I'm excited to, to try. It's not popper, of course, but <laughs> there's that's some things. Uh, I'm excited to try. Let's go ahead and get into our weekly segments here. Let's start off with play of the day. I don't have one because I didn't play the challenge, but I understand you have a pretty spicy one from the finals. So the best play of my tournament was probably in the finals, game three versus Affinity. It was his turn four. He was on the play. He was attacking me for five with one ATOG and one of the four fours. I was a 17, so... I had the option to Moments Peace because it's quite scary to go down to like 12 because he can fling Timur Battle Rage, Galvanic Blast a couple times to, to like kill me from that point. Uh, so I was considering playing Moments Peace to basically save 5 life instead of 17. But what I instead did in the end was that I ancient grudged his uh, red source. He had three artifact lands he'd play, one red, one green, one blue. So I ancient grudged his red source and on my turn I ancient grudged his spring leaf drum. So he was cut off red sources for a few turns which led me to to win in the end because it bought me some time and some safety to uh, execute my own game plan and make the fog lock uh, go that's a pretty gross line honestly and it's sweet that you saw that now what is your silly slivers ability so slivers um what i mostly know about slivers is that it's a really good matchup for tron but i think a really cool ability would be either all slivers get tap 
target creature becomes a sliver until the end of turn, or all slivers get tapped, target creature becomes a copy of this creature. Because if you could create more slivers, it would be it would be crazy. It would be really crazy, and I think that would be quite a cool abilities. That is pretty silly. Slivers everywhere. Everybody has slivers. Now, I'm going to play off of that with a listener's suggestion. What about if we did a sliver with tap, exile this creature? Any player can play this ability. It was a pleasure to speak with you this week, and I appreciate you joining me. All right. Uh, thank you for having me. It's been interesting to, to talk a little bit. We'll see where Hopper is heading off after after this. And thanks once more to my guest for coming on the podcast. I found it fascinating to learn that Burn is no longer a bad matchup for Tron. Historically, it has been. It'll be interesting to see how this new metagame develops. The last challenge had six total Tron pilots, four of whom made top eight, two of whom split in the top four, one of whom one total win percentage of 73.8 percent for those pilots with our previous guests Halsaw being the shadow player working with hampus to develop this list and doing quite well himself perhaps because he's so adamant about tron deserving to be banned or perhaps because we've just survived the cold of astrolabe winter i do have some concerns about tron but hopefully the metagame will adapt. Hopefully, more players are willing to play turn one Delver Secrets, back it up with some counter magic, and put Tron in the corner. At the end of the day, the format is still new, and it is far too early to call for a ban. Just a prediction I expect to speak with more Tron players on the Popper Players podcast because I expect it to win more challenges. But whatever does win this challenge the next week, I'm going to try to talk to the player who piloted it and get their take on the format. And I'll be sure to ask, how's your Tron matchup? Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you then.